The phrase contemporary Native American artist to me is just another label. People use that so that they easily know what it is. So much of what is indigenous to North America isn't identifiable to the popular culture anyway. People are very skeptical of things they don't understand or that defy labels. I am here now, so I am contemporary, I am Native American, and I am an artist. I don't want it to be any more loaded than that. People have come in and they've expressed over and over again that they didn't know what it meant to see contemporary Native American art. We really strive to bring in contemporary work that helps challenge preconceived notions of the world. These artists were brought together for Cross Currents because they're making successful, progressive, contemporary work. They're offering positive change in thinking and creating new works that give us a different way of understanding indigeneity in contemporary society. People hear contemporary Native art and you know, think beads and feathers. There are these things that are imagined to be very native because of the material or the pattern. And so there is, I think, a desire to see that when people are trying to grab onto something they understand. And I think that's always true in art. And not just in art, it's in life. Things that are not easily understood, things that we can't grab onto easily, are a little bit scary. <laughs> what I think is the biggest disconnect is that the work doesn't fit neatly into a box of, of what people think about when they think about you know, contemporary Native art. There are certain pieces that I think people understand better in the context of, of Native art and other pieces that people feel, I'm like, well, how is this Indian art? In talking with several of the artists who are in the exhibit, there's a really strong personal connection for each of these artists. Mm -hmm. Wanted to ask you though, how do you think that that very personal work is more broadly accessible to someone who doesn't have that connection? Well, I think the personal connection is what makes the work so powerful. That is why these artists are so successful. They're pouring their own personal stories and histories into the work, but we all have connections through these personal histories that we can relate to. We all have a heritage, we all have ancestry, and we all have experienced someone having a preconceived notion about who we are. And so we can understand where that is coming from. The work that I wanted to see that described my experience in my life wasn't being made. So I sort of subconsciously, then consciously decided to make that work that was speaking about the contemporary Native existence and experience in life at the beginning of the 21st century with all of our sort of complex issues and existing in not just two worlds anymore, many worlds. For me personally, <laughs> as a woman whose ancestry is complicated and, and a combination of settlers and indigenous people, I'm really aware of the violent history of colonialism in North America specifically. Thinking about those things is actually a way to expand my own experience and my own um, personal connection to larger issues in the world, historically and contemporary, and to, to find a way to talk about these things that are really difficult and to think about these things that are re really difficult in a way that's not super specific to my own cultural background and my own cultural experience. I am interested in making work that can speak to something broader. I've always set my sights on a larger audience, not necessarily um, a provincial audience in the Southwest. I've always done national shows and had international shows, so I'm inching towards getting into the national and international conversation as far as what my work is about and sort of how my voice is valid and can be heard in those conversations and taken seriously. These two pieces, My Basket Story and Weaving the Bayou, are both a part of a larger series called Weaving Water. One of the things that came up in my travels for this particular series was this idea of migration of culture and having different cultures coming into contact with one another via water. There is a dialogue going on, and some of these artists are really saying we don't have to accept Hollywood's interpretation of what it means to be indigenous. But I think also these artists are really standing up to say that 
these cultures are growing and changing and they're alive today. And so these are people in the 21st century and they are influenced by media, other artists and other cultures. And so all those things come together and create who these artists are and also what the work is. The idea behind this work is the destruction of something without utilizing any of it. It was important for me to build this body of work in this space to show the waste. The thrift store clothes uh, from the beginning are clothes that have been worn and then discarded for somebody else to purchase and wear again. I ended that cycle by taking those clothes and then breaking them down. So there is a level of contradiction in that whole process. So there's a little tongue in cheek to me, you know, in the, in the building of it that it is uh, hypocritical, you know? And um, I just try to keep the hip and hypocritical. <laughs> the power of art is that it can change and alter people's perceptions of different cultures or the world in general. Each of these artists, I think, really does that in, in either a very direct or subtle way. Art and artists have a responsibility to their little window in time. They're sort of like the storytellers, the information holders. They kind of hold a mirror up to society and point out very specific things about that period of time that they exist in. So I think it's the artist's responsibility to comment on society and mark time.